so yes, yeah, so welcome to our uh, skin for the skin insights sites. on uh, the skin for elderly and frail people. And frail, those who are frail or those who are hospitalized. I think this is such an important topic. Um, but one of the reasons, because I think, you know, many more of us are going through this than I think um, people realize, right? I've mentioned before in some other lives about the sandwich generation. Do you know what that is? Uh, I th I've heard of it. Okay, it's because human beings are living longer. So a lot of us are taking care of young children while at the same time taking care of parents who have gotten very old. You know, it's great because it means we're living longer, but they are requiring more care, right? So it's a really important topic. But one of the reasons I'm particularly excited about this topic today is that it came as a suggestion um, from a viewer named Mark Yi, who sent me a direct message on Instagram. And he sent me the idea, but also with the most incredible questions, really laid out beautifully in a table. So we'll be sending him a thank you gift because you this so was much. really incredible. And we're thank going you. to be making it a blog post and a video as well. Um, so yeah, so thank you, Mark. This is really, thank you so much. this is really, really important. Um, and Mark, you have my word. We'll get through as many of your questions as possible today. Whatever we don't get through today, we will, I commit to you sending my mom's answers because she answered them specifically. Maybe what, you should like uh, post them publicly. So Also, we'll be doing a blog post that will have those questions and answers. So what we'll be talking about is, see, Jan is saying she's currently taking care of someone who's elderly. Exactly, right? So yeah. a lot more people are kind of dealing with it. Exactly, right? Liz also says this. So um, we're also, we're, so it's not just people who are elderly, but also if you know someone who has to spend a lot of time, say, in a, in a bed, right? Or who uses a wheelchair. Sometimes this can be, sometimes these same issues can be an issue. Spoiler alert, virgin coconut oil and Mono Lauren will, will play big parts in this. And mm -hmm. I won't get into it so much because my mother handles so many, takes care of so many patients in this category so i'll really spend most of the time with her so quick reminders here yes uh please subscribe <laughs> and click on notification uh on youtube um also please follow us on instagram and facebook at uh at vmv hypoallergenics sorry last time i said VMV anyway group. vmv hypoallergenics yeah yes. so yeah please do that please do that and definitely comment and definitely share your ideas for other topics oh, and as you see this was birthed by a viewer yeah, so. we come out uh, with new videos every week. So again, subscribe and click on. We're so click close on to the, a thousand already yeah. on YouTube. Come so. on, we have to get. Oh, fantastic! I'm happy. We have a nurse here who takes care of someone who's older. I'm excited. Um, so you can shop our organic, clinically published virgin coconut oil at vmvhypoallergenics.com or vmvhypoallergenics.ph in the Philippines, or our other products, most of which contain that exact oil or Monolaurin. In the Philippines, you shake, can shake, also shop. Oh, right. In the Philippines, you can also shop on Viber. Uh, now what's happening is- You can is shop on Viber? Yeah, in the Philippines. It's a like chat platform. Anyway, you uh, can get this cap as well, which is pretty cute. Um, all June, if I'm not mistaken, as your gift thing? with a qualified purchase, you need to shop. And then remember, you can private message us your patch test results. We can customize recommendations for you based on your particular allergens. Yeah. And I in the USA, we're still doing 25, 20 percent off all of our EGCs, our e-gift cards. And oh. in the Philippines, some reminders, you can also get the Monolaurin pellets, which we'll be talking about today at VMV Skin Research Center and Clinic. You can find them on Viber or Facebook or PM us here. Um, we also just launched a home service for patch testing, which is pretty awesome. So if we you're staying still at home, did? we can oh, do yes, that. Oh, yes, I remember this. And a lot of people have been asking about my mom's book, RS Co RX Coconut. So if you would like that, drop us a PM as well. And we can make that happen. Yeah. If you would like a teleconsultation with her or other doctors that we work with, same banana. And in the Philippines, more stuff, the 20% off of all GCs. Um, we do have a big sale on skincare and makeup. It's our Glowing Going Gone sale. I'm actually going to be doing a video about this. Um, and also our facials are back Yay. in select uh, boutiques. Our large sizes of Armada 60 and 45 are back in stock, right. as well as Essence Superwash 500 50 ml. was also in stock. And our stores are open in the Philippines, so find us on vmvhypoallergenics.ph. 
Um, now that all that is done, we'll get right to it. I'll call in my mom because there's so much to talk about here. Wait, here, right? And such amazing right? questions that I want to make sure I get right? to. Right? That's, I'm sure, really unpleasant to listen to on the Sorry. mic. I apologize. <laughs> okay. So. Come here. Do I get a hug first? Yes, you do. Oh, my gosh. My goodness. <laughs> I tell you. So, Gavin, you got a nice comment from Sally. You said you're a very good little man of VMV, and I completely agree. This young man, you don't, please don't move. No, uh, no, 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 no. That was it. I, that was perfect. I'm gonna okay. go uh, exactly. Now. All right. Thank so you, Gavin. Uh, go, go, go. Give me a push. Okay. A little bit. All right. Cushion. So, chair. I am. Cushion. Oh, okay. Okay. Is Sorry. it okay? Okay. So. We have several Hi. questions here. I had mentioned, well, ah, here. getting to her introduction. What I love reminding people of is that dermatology is not just aesthetics, right? Um, which is always fun, of course. But I grew up with her and mega dermatology and dermatopathology, which really includes caring for complex conditions and many people who have prolonged hospital stays. So she's actually regularly called into the hospital to care for people who are older or frail or recover or require more particular care. So, say hi to good af please. good mor good morning, good, good afternoon, good evening. Wherever you are, good <laughs> afternoon, good evening as well. It's it's really very exciting to be yeah. having this right here, where there's a fantastic uh, view of you and okay. the world. <laughs> so, um, Jana, I remember you actually brought this up. She would like to see a discussion of how contact allergens affect the gastrointestinal mucosa. And how hi. they can hi, this is Madison. <laughs> how they can contribute to GI disorders like acid reflux, eosinophilic esophagitis, etc. Mm -hmm. So maybe we should line that up. We should have that a for a really another or or really go through a blog post. Okay, Jen, I'll commit that to you. I'll write it down because I know you brought that up already before, so I owe you that. So I'm going to go through actually a lot of the questions that Mark sent because they're really comprehensive. The first one was as seniors reach us. Actually, before we dive in, sorry, maybe you can give us like an overview of what are some of the more common things to to see and to to look out for when caring for the elderly, frail, or hospitalized. Or in a wheelchair, right? right. Um, how do I begin? When I got that, when I read the uh, post mm -hmm. of Mark, I was so impressed at this gentleman. It's a man, isn't mm -hmm. it? Who, yeah. who writes out a very detailed description of how what they have been doing already to his to his uh, grandmother, I presume, mm -hmm. and uh, it is fantastic because I happen to also be doing a study right now, a protocol for taking care of hospitalized patients with COVID-19 who have severe to critical cases. Mm. These are similar to what he's talking about. Of course, they have the COVID, but the, the caring of an elderly person who is unable to take care of themselves is quite similar. Mm. Um, among the things that you have to be very careful with is what are they actually being using? You know, are there any gadget? Are there any tubes that are inserted into the nose, or so that they can breathe better, or into the mouth so that they can be fed properly? If that happens, then uh, they cannot take care of themselves, obviously. So we have to take care of themselves. Now, in normal individuals like that, uh, who had, do not have the disease then it's just a daily matter of moisturizing the mouth because it becomes rather dry. They're open, mm. you see, and air goes in and out, and so they, it dries up. So you need something to uh, moisturize it, much as you have to moisturize your skin because it's just so exposed. And when you go out in the sun or go into the pool or whatever, it becomes dry. So do with the mucosa of the right. mouth and the hard okay. palate so and oil. Those are specific questions I actually want to get to that he asked you, right? Yes. But so I guess what I would love to hear from you specifically is when we tend to think about the care of the skin, because the, the skincare industry is huge, right? And a lot of it is based on beauty and glowing and whatever. Clearly, we're talking about something different here. We want the skin to look healthy, but there are also real health risks involved, correct? Correct. What would some of those be? The health risks? To look risk out for, yeah. 
Um, like bed sores is one, the classic, right? Yes, because they cannot move. And so therefore the usual thing is for us to tell the people who are taking care of them or who go to see them every now and then to move them every hour or at the most okay. two hours. So for those, and I know if I'm not mistaken, someone already asked about this, Cian, um, how to deal sort of with bed sores. First, I think the key thing to remember here is prevention obviously is the best thing. So if you can prevent bed sores, rather to prevent so bed sores, you move the yes. position. Yes, first is you observe the skin, mm -hmm. okay? Uh, if the person is, of course, lying flat or urinating uh, or there's water in bed, you know, uh, or there's perspiration and they're not able to move at all to get rid of that uh, pool of water, uh, you have to be looking at the skin. The very first signs that there is going to be a frictional dermatitis is the skin, which has its normal color, then becomes a little bit pale mm. and then becomes reddish. So that's the warning sign. That's the warning sign that there's something going on there. There's pressure, so the blood uh, is being pressed out of the area. There is no more capillary action bringing blood. And then a little bit of inflammation begins because of mm. the lack of oxygen and all that. So watch out for color changes. A color change is always very good to look at. When that happens, uh, you're going to be much more serious and active in applying um, what do you call a slippery oil mm. that is multifunctional. Of course, my favorite is coconut oil because it not only gives you that slip, it also has the fatty acids that will break down almost immediately on application on the skin to be able to contribute to the lipid bilayers mm. that coat all of our cells. Remember we talked about um, each cell is made up, the membrane of each cell? Yeah, the is external made up. cell membrane mm -hmm. is a lipid bilayer. In other words, it's really a fantastic looking thing. Uh, a lipid or a fatty acid has a phosphate thing here. And then it is like a fork like that. So you've got two lipids there. And the other one, there's a bilayer, right? The other one is over there. There you go. And that's the cell membrane. There you go. So exciting. Number one. <laughs> it's only me who is turn, excited about turn, it and describing this, that. Our beloved people turn them, make sure that they move or at least change positions mm -hmm. every hour or mm -hmm. so. So we have, yes, Mark just wanted to follow up. Should it be VCO or any coconut oil will do? It should only be VCO. The reason for mm -hmm. that is That's all the sense. other oils, including what they call the MCT oils, they're derived from oils that have already been heated, refined, RBD and bleached, and you know, so they are the after effects in a sense, the the, uh, the fatty acids that come out of those. What you need is VCO, because what VCO is, is that it's really from the coconut mm -hmm. a meat, ground, pressed, and made into a milk, and out of that milk, the coconut oil is being, right. you know, uh, the water settles, in the milk, yeah. the water settles, the oil now surfaces in the pure oil yeah. that is limpid like water but right. and has virtually and no color. Remember to it. too that VCO, Mona Lauren does exist in breast milk, right? VCO is, is recognized as native, but the lipids at least of our cells. So the less processing you do to it, the better. Right, yes. the more straight from the tree. I did want to add, it's actually very simple for those of you who, who are caring for both elderly and babies, <laughs> because that's our the sandwich generation, right? What when, for my children when they were babies, that's actually how we did diaper change. We did a first cleaning of the waist mm -hmm. with a cotton with a VCO to remove the waist. Mm -hmm. And then I got a second cotton to clean and then maybe a third to really clean. But it was just the oil. We didn't use soaps ever. Um, for frequent diaper changing. Okay, there's so many great questions. I want to make sure I get to them. I Exciting. know that um, Jana asked one that was really, as usual, you know, very complex, and this will be a challenge. I'd love to hear what you say. Okay. How's the best way to care for someone's skin who is elderly and is on a Holter monitor for 30 days to make sure the skin doesn't tear while keeping the skin moisturized when lotion is not supposed to be applied to the areas where the electrodes get placed, as well as the surrounding skin that's used to rotate the electrode patches. Okay. 
um, because it has to be in contact with the skin, so no oil mm -hmm. and grease is allowed, right? Um, what you can do is um, ask if you can get a piece of very, very thin muslin cloth mm. to be placed on top of the skin so that there is an extra layer there. That's one possibility. You can ask the doctor because that will still um, gener not generate but allow electrical impulses to come in pass, from, yeah. from to pass through. So that's one possibility. And the other one would be um, so, or if not, ask the doctor mm. what kind of an intervening thing that can, I can use. This is usually done for about what? A couple of weeks, a month? 30 days. 30 days said, for yeah. a month. So, um, a month will probably produce some from some pro some problems, but what you can also do, do is control the other factors, like for sleeping, for instance. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, make sure that that area doesn't have additional pressure from other things, like a pillow or mm. whatever. Um, that no additional pressure. Uh, along these lines, let me tell you about a patient I recently had, actually, who was using those. What do you got for snoring? So this one had a... Uh, a so, yeah, I think uh, we shared that in the last one where okay. they developed a bald spot here because of the allergic reaction to the sleep apnea helmet and the right. rubber. Right. So I think where she's basically going with this is it looks like Jenna in this particular case. Unfortunately, there might be, unless the doctor says it's okay to put the muslin or some sort of... Um, where I was going also was yeah. that this is used every night and right. yet there was no ulceration. It mm -hmm. was just a bald spot. So maybe for a month, Jana, as long as after, yeah, you don't take it out at all, or, or do you take it out? I don't think you're allowed to take it out. It's a consistent It's really continuous, yeah. right. So there might be, for, if I'm gonna try to interpret for me, what she's saying, right, I would think for myself, okay, there is a risk for sure. Unless the doctor says it's okay to put some sort of intervening thing there, like a muslin cloth. Um, and so what I would do is really, what she said, is try to prevent everything everywhere else that could be contributory, right? So there'll be so some the discomfort, right? Yeah. The pressure, but also even on the rest of the bed sheets, the rest mm -hmm. of the clothing, the perfumes in the air, mm -hmm. so that it's not from here. And then there's also another, <laughs> another right. thing to contend with. And then maybe focus on um, recovery soon after, right? right? Gold compresses with VCO, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Mm -hmm. But that looks and putting on the petrolatum. I really like putting on the petrolatum on top of the VCO. I love that Tammy and Sally are bonding on using VCO before going to bed. <laughs> <laughs> okay, as seniors reach a certain age, this is also from Mark, and then I'll get to this other question. That's really good. Um, dysphagia, mm -hmm. dysphagia, difficulty in swallowing becomes a concern, which is sort of what you were touching on earlier, right? So it's hard for people to consume food or to take food by the mouth, and then they might have to resort to other things. What would be more beneficial to use in this regard, VCO or MCT? Oh, VCO, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Like I was telling you, as far as I know, and MCT people, I'm welcome, I, oh, I welcome you to correct There's me. There's less research on MCT. It's growing, but, but it's as far as I know, BCO. and I got this from a pretty direct source, actually, mm -hmm. that he told me that the MCT is actually um, you know, copra oil. This mm -hmm. is the oil, this is the coconuts that are out in the roadside that are dried out in the sun or dried out through various and ways. And there's a use for that, Yeah, but maybe not. It's made this. into yeah. re refined bleached and RBD deodorized. and deodorized oil. So it's already been so processed and all that so that the antioxidants, which is one of the most important things that are also in coconut oil, are practically gone or are gone completely. So therefore, you don't really want to use anything else except native virgin coconut oil. None of those, you know, and what they were saying is, despite the minimal quantity, even when mixed, actually, I want to add to this, mm -hmm. VCO is very, very omnipresent, actually, in a lot of infant form formulas, Correct. particularly for premature babies, mm -hmm. babies who are underweight. Yeah. So it, it's, it's similar in that sense. Plus, and she wrote this in her book, actually, it gives you this amazing mouth feel, and it gives you a sense of satiety, which actually might feel better for 
the person's mouth because they're dry and it's uncomfortable and mm -hmm. they don't want to eat in part because it, ugh, it feels like chalk, right. Right? right? When the VCO is there and it coats everything and the mm -hmm. mucosa is happier, that might also trigger that brain GI connection mm -hmm. of, you know, wanting to eat. That might right. help also. And re remember yeah. that when the, the area there is dry, there are organisms that live normally there, in particular the, the organism, the fungus that produces trust when it becomes too many, you know, like yes. if it's dry so the conditions are not good anymore, the candida species that are normally present mm. there will proliferate more and before you know it you begin to see these white things there called trush in thrush. the top. That's right, the fungal right. infection, which babies also get. <laughs> You can prevent that yeah. by using the coconut oil for cleaning every day that mouth. Mm. So it moisturizes. Or wiping. It, yeah, it kills the organisms which are pathogenic, mm -hmm. but allows the normal ones to, to stay. Yeah. And because it has no additional strong antiseptic like bet, like, uh, you know, like the strong antiseptic things, <laughs> chemicals that uh, one tends to Iodine. use. Iodine. Right, yeah. you know, since it doesn't have that, it maintains the normal microbiota of that area. And so therefore, thrust doesn't develop. Herpes, uh, especially in people who used to have herpes when they were younger as well, they can have viral infections around there, which is so messy because mm -hmm. you, then you get these little bubbles and whatever in the mouth and, and the tongue it's and the lips. to deal with. Right, so yes, preventive and treatment wise, the use of coconut oil to prevent and then to continually use for whenever there are actual uh, break yeah. breakdowns that occur. I told y'all, spoiler alert, this would be all about VCO and monolaurin again. Um, so despite the minimum quantity when mixed with austerized food, one problem with VCO is that, as opposed to other oils, is that it makes the aseptosyringe syringe very slippery, like the tube can fall. Right. How about wearing a pair of cotton gloves? Mm. If you pair, wear, wear a pot, cotton gloves while you're doing all that, it becomes, it may be spoiled a little bit by the oil, but you know, it's relatively dry compared to the plastic that is uh, coated with a film of oil. Right. Okay. Helps a lot. All right. So. And um, remember, by the way, when you're taking care of skin in the elderly or anybody who can't do it themselves, you must not wear rubber or latex gloves. Yeah. Because m rubber is one of the most common allergens of the skin. And so when you're applying the oil, you know, I see people doing that and it's a latex. I said, oh dear, it's mm -hmm. going to itch from that rubber and, you know, not be good for this. Also, skin. oil, oils in general aren't great with latex, which is why they're not recommended as a lubricant, for example, for mm -hmm. sexual intercourse and used with a condom. Uh, right. It's because we can it, break for it down. latex condoms because it'll break it down. So eventually it'll break down the glove too, and that, that breakdown of the glove material will add to the sensitivity right. of the other person and yourself, Very right? Good. See, <laughs> I learn, I pay attention. Um, what instances might including monolaurin pellets help? Oh, monolaurin pellets help uh, very much in whenever there's real infection already that you're expecting. Um, I'll give you an example. What happened to me last week is that for five days, six mm. days, I had a low-grade fever, mm, which true. I kept low-grade. I, I knew mm. from knowing myself and how, what I was feeling and all of that, that it was probably the flu. Mm. But unlike flu in most people where the fever goes up for about 39 degree you know, temperature in the first two, three, four days, Mine, I was able to keep it down at about 30, the highest it went to was 38.4.5 once or twice. And then the rest of the time. The way, in case people were thinking COVID Oh, and I had my yeah. RT-PCR done yesterday yeah, and it was completely negative. negative. Yeah. So, you know, I had, I did a lot of tests yesterday just to be sure what it was. <laughs> it turned out to be negative for dengue, negative for RT-PCR, negative for my normal blood count. So it was, except for the low white cell count, so I knew so it, it was a viral with infection. Infections. Yes. Okay. So therefore it can be used again just like coconut oil, it can be used as preventive for prevention. I recommend to people to drink to eat to drink one capsule of the pellets, which we measured to be roughly at about the same as one tablespoon of uh, one uh, tablespoon of uh, coconut oil. Mm. So one of that a day is enough. And then if you happen to be exposed and you're not so sure you take two a day mm -hmm. or if you really feel that yeah. you have an expect two to twice a day 
And when you're really infected, like I was, I was taking two capsules every four to six hours. So there I was really overloading myself. There's with a it. phenomenal um, article that she just shared with me that just came out from yes. a hospital in Indonesia. Um, University. Yeah, University of Indonesia, pardon me. Very fantastic citations, great review of studies for monolaurin against infection and also against COVID, mm -hmm. right? So the study she's doing is on VCO against COVID itself. But this was a study on monolaurin against COVID and other infections. And um, I'll maybe put it up on our blog so that people can read it or can see if they can get access to it. Yeah. And I'll include a summary. Monolaurin is really uh, amazing. When you yeah. want some a power broker, the, this is what <laughs> this is what you're going to be using. Okay, from Sally, my mom is 101 years old. Awesome, fantastic. And she gets her legs. She gets a coconut oil massage on her legs every evening before sleep. But we notice that her skin is so tight. We're scared she might get scratches or fissures. Tight. Hmm. Like it looks very stretched. I'm guessing. Right. Right. And very um, tight. I wonder if you need more, if you're living in a country that is very cold or you have air conditioning or temperature that's way lower than 30 at uh, 25 degrees in her bedroom uh, most of the time, there's really no water there. The humidity is quite low. Mm. What you might want to do is uh, first get the a, so, uh, a, a um, towel. Mm and put it on her skin first so that there's a little bit of hydration that you're mm. doing on the surface of the skin. And then after that, don't wipe it off, get the coconut oil now and apply it, massage it thoroughly into the skin. Then on top of that, get the petrolatum, the pure 100% petrolatum, and put it on thickly on that. And then lastly, this is just to approve a point, you got a plastic uh, thing like saran wrap maybe or something cling like wrap. that, a cling wrap, and wrap it overnight and see yeah. how that tightness of the skin yeah, it's an is the following morning. It's an intensive overnight yeah. high, like humectant right. moisturization treatment. She also likes that for eczema, for re yes. big flare-ups of right. psoriasis or atopic yeah. dermatitis. Or people who've been using steroids for a long yes. time, you know, just in case you're using steroids, She's by the way, the skin becomes very thin treatment. and, you know, so that's a good way of proving to yourself that oh, okay so okay. he really likes hydration so a little a little wetness yes right and then virgin coconut oil and then the and then, and then wrap it up and then wrap it up if not cling wrap because some people she's been saying some people might be allergic to the acrylates mm -hmm. um in like a muslin cloth right right um and keep it on overnight wrap it up. yeah okay so when feeding via ngt the tube is taped onto the nose and the neck to hold it in place yeah, but since fantastic. it's taped for long periods of time mm -hmm. there's a possibility of abrasions to occur what we've tried so far again this is from mark is to change the ngt tape every so often and in between changes to wipe the skin with vco this helps clean out the adhesive while also hopefully helping the skin which it does and maintains the health of the skin and actually i wonder you know, to Jana's previous question earlier, when the the Holter mo monitor is finally off, if this might be helpful. Um, so it's been a year, and so far my grandmother's skin has had no issues. I wonder if there's a way to get the Holter there, mm -hmm. but to anchor it, you know, like you know how people are when they're allergic to the masks, mm -hmm. and uh, how they are able to bring, instead of hanging it there, they bring it there and then tie it up here in the back so that the hair, it's like a cushion. Yeah, I mean, I'm you know, tossing out ideas here. I hope so. One of it helps. Uh, Sian's asking. This is interesting. Are there any? Oh wait, sorry, I missed. Mine was asking, can getting old make your skin more sensitive? Uh, yes. And by the way, getting old is an everyday process, uh, whether you're young or older. So every day we are skin. Uh, our skin is getting older, and especially nowadays, with the environment being what it is the skin is now being affected by a lot of chemicals in our environment, the pollutants in mm -hmm. our environment that's, you know, that are coming out nowadays about how much there is in the water and in the waterways and in the plants and the things that we're eating, you know, and all that. So these affect our skin on an everyday yeah. basis. You know, so They can also, you know, the process of aging is an oxidative process, mm -hmm. right? So it's not just, just the passage of time. It's like she said, the things we're exposed to. So let's say I meet a 20-year-old whose skin looks quite old and, and maybe dried and not healthy. That could be because of a, a health condition maybe that she has or he has. 
or it could be because of a boatload of allergens and irritants that they use every single day. Mm -hmm. It could be because of zero use of sunscreens mm -hmm. and a lot of time under the sun. Mm -hmm. So exposomes age the skin as well. It's not just time, mm -hmm. right? Uh, so we can hasten it or slow it down a little and keep the skin healthier over time. Mm -hmm. What, if I'm not mistaken, I've heard her say before, as we age, we produce less oil, less sebum. Mm -hmm. As we age, the barrier layer of the skin through years of abuse <laughs> tends to get less happy. Um, we get more fissures in the skin as our skin is dry, more cracks in the skin. Mm -hmm. That's always an opportunity for microbes to infect. Mm -hmm. And that's why the viruses come and you have those tiny little duck-like warts. And warts and stuff. So many yeah. of those are viral in origin. Some of them are really just benign imperfections of growths of the skin because of the changing pattern of growth from aging. Mm -hmm. yeah. And there's also just our skin, like all our organs, our teeth, our lungs, our kidneys, everything, the skin changes over time and it can become sensitive. You can develop an allergy late in life. You can actually grow out of an allergy even, mm -hmm. right? That can happen too. Okay, another great question from Sian. Are there any studies um, that people who, that the elderly with degenerative knee or joint disorders could benefit from ingesting VCO as part of their daily diet, since mm -hmm. it's also considered anti-inflammatory. Yes, um, we actually I, uh, did an anti-inflammatory diet study that uh, we did skin biopsies of at the beginning and after 28 days of uh, using coconut oil versus corn oil in the diet. It was very, very well controlled study where, you know, anyway, it was very well controlled study. Mm -hmm. And we did the skin biopsies at the beginning, at the end. It's fascinating that the uh, the results of the immunohistochemistries that we did. Immunohistochemistries. Yeah, stains of the biopsies that were that we did actually showed changes that were more for anti-inflammatory effect by the coconut oil versus more pro-inflammatory by the corn oil. Mind you, this was a small study, but it is something to, you know, and there are so many other new studies. Now, if you look into the literature, a lot, lot of new studies about yeah. the anti-inflammatory mm -hmm. effects. Because like I've always said before, I've also said that the skin is actually the best image of what is going on it's inside the body, reflection. including yeah. a call, talking about the joints. Psoriasis is, is one of the yeah. things I'm, you know, very, very, um, it's a passion. It's, it's really her specialty. She's right. really into it. I see a lot of psoriasis <laughs> patients, and I treat my psoriasis patients in a very functional way, in a way that I give them the coconut oil as part of their diet, as part of their ritual of application and all that. But on the other hand, I'm probably one of the best users of biologics in the country, giving the biologics to them, the newest and the best, and whatever is coming out. And what they are is that these amazing new biologics are so targeted in what they do for inflammation that it has now been shown that, for instance, before we were wondering if when we treat the biologics for our psoriasis on the skin, will it also be improving their cardiovascular system, mm. the pulmonary system, their dementia that is due to the inflammation inside as well as the joint pains. At and lo and behold, everything. it is anti-inflammatory yeah. as well for the joints. So yes. There's an interesting study too on methocelial cells and baking soda. That's actually how I keep my auto-inflammatory thing in check, that and probiotics. So maybe I can share that later. I'll go to the comments and write the link of that study. That's a it's very a very interesting fantastic study. study. Yeah. Certain for certain cases, ear cleaning also becomes difficult, Absolutely. such as infection or for uncooperative patients. One thing our ENT advised is to use a very well-known brand's baby oil and to just put a few drops into the ear onto the earlobe every night. Mm -hmm. This later allows the ear, wa ear wax to just gradually surface. Could absolutely. VCO be used for the same purpose? Yes, absolutely. And actually, I wrote an article on that um, way back about comparing the presence of that common uh, baby, oil. baby oil. It's a pure uh, petrol. It, it contains mineral oil. It's mineral oil. Yeah. Mineral oil is a great oil, you know, it's from the planktons that, you know, the petrol, the gasoline comes from, and at the very end they get the mineral oil. So it's petroleum based. It doesn't have the uh, organicity of a coconut oil. So it doesn't have the fatty acids that contribute towards the repair of the lipid bilayer and the softening of the wax inside. 
So absolutely, I use it. I have no problems at all. I have a little bit of hearing loss because of an inherited trait. But otherwise, what? <laughs> but, other, <laughs> but otherwise, I have no waxes to worry about there and all of that. So do, very simply, you don't have to put it in as drops. Some people are worried about putting drops. What you can do is get a baby Q-tip. Um, what do you call that? Uh, uh, a swab. Swab. Cotton, cotton swab. swab. A baby, and then you dip it into the oil, you know, um, sort of uh, press it around the inner neck so that there's, it doesn't is not dripping. And just put it in and go around like that. There will be always be a little bit of oil that will be lining that ear canal that will also go in. And you do that twice a day, and there you're doing a great uh, service to the little old lady that mm. you're going to do that on. So I'm going to bring up warts again, which is another question that was brought up by Mark. Um, you kind of touched on it earlier. When a patient uh, can no longer be instructed to cooperate or sit still for a procedure or when the patient is too vulnerable to be sedated, right? Um, so Mark has inquired with dermatologists and has bought creams, which they've yet to try, but are there natural ways of resolving this issue or to prevent further spreading? Would VCO be helpful? Absolutely. I'll give you an example. I had a, a, a young man who was uh, who had a cluster of condyloma acuminatum, that is a form of skin virus. And it was, if this is, his, if I may, the anal area, this entire area was covered with the condyloma acuminatum. I'm giving you a, a, an over the hill kind of an, an example to a show you. Condylom condyloma acuminata. Okay. It's a form of virus of the skin. Um, the other one is Verruca vulgaris, mm -hmm. which is the that common wart. But this is condyloma because it likes to stay in wet areas. So there. And I thought with all the parents and him, I said, that would hurt like crazy <laughs> for me to remove that by cautery. It's usually how you remove this condylomata. And not only that, after that, he's going to be, he's going to remember me every day when he uses the bathroom because that's <laughs> going to hurt like mad. Hurt like crazy. So I said, as long as you're not expecting an immediate removal of these, let's have him use the monolaurin ointment with the monocaprin, I like to use that, mm -hmm. and then uh, the coconut oil every day and, you know, p apply it. One month, the, you know, the, I actually refer this young man to the infectious, an infectious disease doctor on sexually transmissible diseases. I like to do that and ask his opinion as well and what to do and all that. So he actually said, let's also vaccinate him. So he was vaccinated. And so how much of this was due to the vaccine and how much of the coconut oil, we don't know, but definitely, he, the doctor, was so impressed. He said, I've never seen the vaccine do that, you know. So if this can do it to condyloma accumulata that extensive, mm. using it daily as a preventive of the virus to grow on damaged older skin, yeah. you know, and therefore then also if somehow the virus is able to populate it, to be able to get rid of it. So both preventive and therapeutic. She's even but, used it for very chronic herpes um, oh, yeah. flare-ups. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I mean, the antiviralness of VCO and monolaurin really shouldn't be dismissed. It's, it can be quite effective. Mm -hmm. Ruth is bringing up, and I just wanted to share this because I think it's, it's a good thing to share. I remember a previous stream mentioning how prolonged hospital air conditioning can also contribute to dryness yes. and skin issues. Yes. This is true. Uh -huh. um, the thing is, I don't think you have a choice, right? You can't have the hospital turn off the air conditioning. I have had some of my, off, uh, my, my, some. It depends, I guess, who you are. And, <laughs> I, and you can have the air conditioning turned off. I've had the air conditioning <laughs> vent of my patient. The, the patient's too dry, please. I can't have that. Either that or we keep the window open so that there's at least a little bit of circulation of air here. Would a humidifier be a good idea? No. A humidifier might help a little bit okay. as well, yeah. All right, folks, uh, since it is eight minutes to go. Is it really? That was fast. <laughs> that was really fast. I have committed to Mark. Again, Mark Yi, you are, in my opinion, an angel for bringing up this topic. And he was really sweet. You know, in the DM on Instagram, he wrote, maybe this is too much of a niche topic. And I was like, no, man. So many people are caring for people in hospitals or with prolonged exposure to either wheelchairs or whatever. Or young people who get a break in the, uh, you know, yeah. in the leg or what. I mean, you or don't have, have to be, be hospitalized, old. right? right. So, so this is like, wonderful, Mark. It's a fantastic topic. And he 
You should. I really, truly would it's love really to impressive. share it. He created this table of what the issue was, what they've tried so far, and his and question. questions. So, in, in respect oh. for Mark, I made a fourth column <laughs> with her answers, with my answers, <laughs> which I'll be sending him. But I also thought it was so valuable. So I will be doing a video on this and a blog post on this and putting citations and research so that it's quickly accessible for anyone who ever has to deal with this moving forward. Super. Thank you. This is a fantastic thing. I, know, I, I, agree. <laughs> I love that you're feeling better. Finally, oh thank goodness. So I was anyway, Mono Lauren um, helped me a lot. My temperature never went to 30 in the 30s. Sorry, what is it that you like? Mono what? Mono Lauren and Mono <laughs> I know you're a big C10 fan. C10 and C12. There you go. Okay. Okay. Bye bye Thank everybody. You. Bye everyone. Take bye care. Mom. Take care. Take care. Okay. Wear so masks. yeah, just some quick reminders, folks. If you would like her book or the monolorn pellets or a teleconsultation mm -hmm. with her or other doctors that we work with and nutritionists too, also for the care of the elderly or people who have nutritional deficiencies or others other things they're dealing with, you can drop us a PM. We can make that happen. We're also doing at home uh, patch tests now in the Philippines. Otherwise, everywhere in the world, if you've had a patch test and would like a customized recommendation on what you can use, we can do that for you based on your particular allergens. Um, other than that, as you saw from Mark, you are influential. I don't know when I would have maybe brainstormed this topic, but I mean, thanks to Mark, you know, we got to cover it and I think it's really, really important. So please definitely let us know any other topics that you think might be helpful. I owe Jana the... Um, the GI skin interaction uh, thing. So I will get to that, I commit to that. And yeah, for the rest of everyone else, I hope you're safe. Um, get vaccinated, stay healthy, and we will see you next week. Thank you very much, bye bye. <laughs>